Alright, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Portion of the Stash Project. Today is February 24th, 2020, and we have a decent little show for you, if I do say so myself. So we got a few kit uh, announcements, some filler stuff out of Japan, a couple of teases for some upcoming kits from Ravel. Remember them, they're bankrupt. And uh, a few kit releases this week, just a couple of things uh, I would expect next week, since it is the last week of February, and... Uh, a few companies like Aoshima tend to re reissue in a bulk at the end of the month, that the end of the month video will be uh, pretty hefty. Although technically the end of the month for February will actually be, you know, the first video of March due to the leap year, but eh, it is what it is. So anyway, uh, over at Aoshima, a couple of three things I tossed onto the April pile. Uh, reissue of the 83 Skyline R30 RS Aero Custom, reissue of the 2016 Toyota Crown Traffic Police, and then a uh, several, uh, let's see, seven sets of 14-inch wheels, and these are pretty much all of the wheels from uh, the More Grand Champion set that they reissued for the first time in a long time, uh, about a year ago. And they are the Yayoi, the Longchamp, the Hayashi, the Starshark, the Kaku Tekken, the Techno Phantom, and the Formula Mesh. So all the little 14-inch gumball uh, wheels and tires coming back. Also in the April thing, uh, the 112 scale R32 GTR. We had mentioned that the race car kit had been delayed till April. They have now delayed the street car to April as well, so obviously that's not coming out in February. Hasegawa added the 1977 uh, Safari Rally, third place finishing, Lancia Stratos uh, to their reissues for uh, April. For March, Hasegawa added the Nisiki Trust 962C Porsche from the 1991 Le Mans. A couple of on-demand reissues there. They tend to do that every now and then. Uh, and then the other sort of delay information we have is the, uh, the Eurace R34 Type R which is the new uh, Eurace body kit on the new tool Mordor R34 that uh, Aoshima did. That has been delayed indefinitely right now. Uh, nothing to do with any of the, the, the pandemic nonsense that's going on right now, but rather uh, there's some sort of production delay with it. Uh, I know they had a built kit on display at All Japan Toy and Hobby, which was back in, what, October, but right now, for whatever reason, and let me turn my dinger off so that the next person I am with me doesn't, I am the whole video, uh, the uh, current pictures on the Aoshima corporate website are sort of 3D prototypes, so something is going on with the way perhaps that fit or didn't fit uh, in terms of the way the, the uh, kit pieces were, so that is... In back into research and development, it looks like so. Uh, we'll let you know when and if we see that making its its comeback. So right now it's still you know just 2020 for a release, but there is no actual month attached to it anymore. So going over to the Ravel teases, a couple of things that were listed by uh, I believe it's Stevens and a couple other distributors at this point uh, for. April release. Uh, first up, one thing we're not going to show you on the April releases is that 79 El Camino 3-in-1 that they showed at NNL West. You guys have seen it. I don't need to show you another picture of it. Uh, then the other two kits are this, uh, Dom's 71 Plymouth GTX with a Fast and the Furious uh, marketing tie-in. So uh, there, it does say new parts on the box. I'm assuming those are sort of the pro touring style wheels and tires, and obviously there's a different decal sheet with it. Um, I don't know what, if any other parts are in there. kind of looks like maybe this there's a different set of seats in there. It's hard to tell from the box art. Uh, but that is a promise to come back. And that's, you know, the GTX is one of those things that I've never bought and never purchased for some reason. I spent an inordinate amount of time finding what I consider to be an affordable uh, Plymouth Satellite, which is what the GTX is based on, that kit from the 1980s that Monogram did. When they changed it into the GTX, uh, from what I understand, they made a couple of changes that, make the, the kit impossible to go back to the satellite, which is why it's never been reissued in all these years. Now, watch them make a liar out of me now that a new company has the tooling, but that's always been the reasoning that Monogram and Ravel have given why the satellite has never been reissued since the 1980s. But, for whatever reason, every time I see a GTX, I pick it up, I look at it, I'm like, yeah, because I'm not, like, a super duper Mopar guy, but I, I, I do like my Mopar, so it's one of those kits that I would buy, and I always just put it back, and I'll get it some other time, and then it just, then the, you know, it disappears, and it's really expensive on eBay, so I might grab one of those when it comes back out, just to, uh, 
build it as a GTX, although that black Pro Tour not necessarily uh, hitting me the wrong way. And then the other kit is this, which is something we figured was coming. Uh, it has been uh, over a year since the original new tool of this has been released, and that is this, a all new, and I know that's an all new in the sense of the advertising slogan that this is probably taken from, but this is the 69 Chevelle SS396. So yes, this is the next version of the 68 Chevelle tool. Like we told you guys when that came out a year and a half ago, uh, that that was obviously not the only tool, no, not the only kit in that tooling that a 69 Chevelle seemed like a no-brainer, especially once I had the actual physical kit in my possession and could sort of look at the way the kit was engineered. It was quite obvious that a 69 was in the cards. Uh, a lot of people didn't believe that for some reason, especially, you know, on the forums, but ha 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 Yes, 69. So this will hopefully put to bed forever that old AMT kit, which is not the worst thing in the world, but it's certainly not anything to write home about either. Uh, a lot of the 69 Chevelle's issues are the fact that it's an, you know, an old annual kit based on the 68 that they did at first, and it's... It's never been right. The taillights in particular always piss everybody off because they're molded in and there's no, like, red pieces for them, and the trim's not right, and this isn't right, and that's not right. What I found interesting about this is in the first few days that we've known officially that the 69 Chevelle is coming officially, uh, a lot of people have been, of course, like, oh, why didn't they do a convertible, or why didn't they do the Yanko, or why didn't they do a Baldwin Motion, although there, I think there's only two or three known 69 Baldwin Motions, but whatever. Uh... It's all, oh, well, wait, 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 wait. Every time the 69 Chevelle from AMT gets reissued, it, it spawns like a five-page bitch festival, pardon my friend, from the, uh, you know, older crowd of how, what a crap model kit that is, and nothing about it is right because it's a mixed match of the 68 and the 69, and blah, blah, blah. But now they're going to offer you a brand new Tool 69, or a newish Tool 69. I mean, there's going to be a substantial amount of parts in that that are, that are new. And the griping I see is, A, there's no drag racing option. Oh, drag race all the things. Oh. And why didn't they do something other than just a stock 69? Now, look, you guys can't have it both ways. I mean, you guys can have it whatever way you want to because you're a fantastic audience who gets it. But for the rest of everybody else, you can't have it both ways, okay? You can't complain about the one thing that exists and then moan that the thing that they're giving you that nominally is going to be ten times better than the thing that you don't like is still not the thing that you like. But it comes right down to it. A lot of people on forums, especially the big model car magazine forum, they don't actually purchase anything. They just lie around and complain. Now, people can come at me and say that, well, you buy a lot of stuff you don't build it. Yeah. But at least I purchased it. <laughs> Purchasing it gives me the right to complain about it. It's sort of like I voted but not for the party that won. You know, it's like, well, at least I voted. Eh, I didn't build it, but I voted. I can, I can tell you what I think of the kit. I don't have to build it to tell you I think it looks good or not in the sense of just fidelity and engineering and stuff like that. But be that as it may, it is what it is. Uh, we have a few releases here domestically uh, from round two, the last two of the January February kits, depending on how you look at it. And they are the Italeri reboxes of the trucks. So first up, you have this, the AMT Freightliner FLC tractor. This is another one of these sort of oddball uh, trucks that Italeri did of American trucks. Because most people that would have been driving trucks in this era would have had an FLD, which is the much more rounded front end on the same chassis, cab, and sleeper formation. And they make an FLD, Bill Larry does. An FLC is a lot like that 377P. It's a heavy-duty, off-road application kind of truck. This is the uh, hood off of a Century class mounted onto the cab and, and whatnot of a FLD, which was, again, like I said, it's an oddball combination uh, because an F because a, a Freightliner Classic was a long wheelbase setback axle boat of a truck. It's like a long wheelbase, long nose. To put that hood on this truck, it's a short nose, and so the nose is much shorter than it would be on a regular Classic. And so you get this, it looks like a big truck, you know, looks for being all square and angular, not aerodynamic like the FLD front end is. But again, it did, the number of these I could say that I've ever seen, and I, when I started driving 22 years ago, one of the first trucks I learned to drive on was an FLD. So I'm old enough to have been around in commercial trucks when these things were new. 
Uh, I, I can't tell you how the FLC is again heavy duty flatbed application. It's a cool truck. Don't get me wrong because it's sort of a mix mash of two things. But be that as it may, uh, that is back out with, again in an AMT boxing this time around. And then the other thing that was released with it for it. Uh, separate box, obviously, but they show it with that truck, is the 40-foot container trailer. Now, obviously, this is the Italeri container, so it's got the sort of weird spread axle European over-fendered chassis thing that doesn't really jive with anything that was ever run in, in the United States. Now, I did get passed a couple of nights ago on uh, the freeway out in central Pennsylvania by a guy pulling a containerized natural gas tank not propane, but and not liquefied natural gas, but actual natural gas. And it was on this style sort of rail trailer, except it was a three-axle. It was like a three-axle European uh, rail chassis. And I have not seen one of those before that I can think of, or, uh, you know, obviously I haven't seen it since. But the 40-foot container, as far as the kit itself goes, I have one of these in a tester's rebox. Uh, what Italy did was make 20-foot container trailers. And they're like little baby trailers. And so this is two 40-foot tra uh, baby trailers, or two 20-foot baby trailers you just put together into one 40-foot. The box on this is not very big. It's, you're going to look at that and go, there's no way there's 40-foot of trailer in here. And technically, you're right, it's two 20-foot. So you're going to have to you know, merge those two trailers together, deal with the seams all the way around the thing where the two 20-foots are going to merge into the 40-foot. And then if you really want to make it sort of U.S. style, you're going to have to do some moving and arranging to the uh, axles, take those fenders off, and uh, do a little other, few other bits and pieces there. It's not impossible, but know that there is some work going in to make it look anything like you've ever seen as far as a U.S. kit. And then we have three releases overseas, two Aoshimas, one Tommy F. So Aoshimas just got a couple more restocks here. First up, you have the uh, Vertex uh, Nissan Silvia S13 from the two model car lineup. And then you also have the Car Boutique Club Toyota AA6 Sprinter Truno. Uh, so this is, you know, your regular sort of standard Truno uh, as far as the initial D kit goes with a different uh, bumper and then side ground effects. It has a different hood that's in the normal AA6s and then it has the uh, roll caging and stuff out of the Project D car. So it's kind of a mis mix mismatch of parts. It's a good looking car though, but uh, it is there is no engine in the in that kit, so keep that in mind if you're looking at it. And then last but not least for this video, we have this, which is the reissue of the Toyota Supra 3.0 GT Turbo from Tommy App. This is a left-hand drive car. Obviously, the box art showing you a California license plate left-hand drive car. You can build a right-hand drive though. Um, it is a curbside, it does have metal axles. It has functioning uh, flip-up headlights as far as uh, up or down. I'm not sure that, again, they're technically functional functional. I have one. I haven't really looked through it yet. Um, but you can position them up or down. I'm assuming if you push position them up, they can go down. Because they appear to be connected to a rod in, in underneath the thing that, it, that connects the headlights together to make them flip up and down. I just don't think... There's a couple of Tommy kits with retractable headlights that actually have like a, a lever in the sticks out of the bottom of the chassis so you can flip them up and down. I don't think it quite has that. I think you've got to sort of like fidget your fingernail underneath there to get them open. But the basic, basic kit, there's basically the body, the chassis, and then two parts runners... That, that if you, there's really just one big part run that's been cut in half because the box on this is kind of small. Uh, but I think proportionally speaking, it's the best of the Toyota Supras. Uh, Fujimi did a later 3.0 turbo with the Targa roof or the removable hardtop, however you look at it, uh, in the High Mecha series. That's the only one that has an engine, but those kits are super duper expensive. Uh, the last time I saw one, even at a reasonable price, it was like 60 bucks. Uh, you look at them on eBay, they tend to be in the $200 range, but of course those are the crazy people that are trying to sell you something that, uh, you know, try to hope a sucker is born every minute and you happen to be that sucker. Don't pay that much for those, but they are out of production for 20 plus some odd years now, so they are, you know, they are hard to come by, but they're not quite that hard to come by. You may notice that things are like a little off kilter back here. I finally painted the section of the wall I said I was going to paint like six months ago, which involves putting in a new section of shelving, so... Uh, this shelf has slid up this way as promised. Um, you can see if I tilt out of the way here. Uh, now uh, I'm starting to build here where, where there used to be rally car kits here. This is starting to be my Le Mans Group C thing. I have some stuff on here that I have to take off. Uh, these Japanese kits in here of the these 
couple Nissan GTRs and the other Japanese stuff. They're going to go on into their own dedicated Japanese race car shelf here shortly. Uh, and then, like I said, this will be uh, more Group C Le Mans, mostly Le Mans, but there's some Group C stuff in there that's not technically speaking Le Mans cars. As we continue to uh, sort of organize the shops. So uh, finally, after all those months and months of threatening you guys with uh, moving stuff, it is. So if you, like there's, uh, these boxes were sort of off to the side. They're sort of, you know, boxes I keep to ship stuff if I sell anything. Um, so pardon the mess and the remodeling, but we're getting there. Slowly but surely, we are getting there. So that is exciting. Painting, cinder block, not really all that exciting, but getting everything sort of stored and rearranged feels good. So anyway, guys, that wraps up this video. We uh, hope you had a great weekend and we'll see you guys on the other side.